everyone. In today's session, we're going to be having a look at file exporting from Smoke. In order to export your files out of the software, you need to ensure that any files you wish to export that are on the desktop need to be saved into the Clip Library. So simply select the options that you want to save and then save them into the library. When we go into the Clip Library, you can see that the options are there and we can then proceed to do the export. In order to export these clips out, you switch from the main menu that we have to the inputting and outputting menu. From here you can find your importing and exporting options. In order to export a clip out of Smoke, you simply select the clip that you wish to export and choose the export option. This will bring you into a browser where you can choose the type of formats and settings that you would like to export. So first off, Smoke supports a variety of formats that you can export including QuickTime formats. So let's go ahead and start off with some simple image formats. So if I go for a simple JPEG setting, you've got control over the export options including the quality setting. So for the best output of a JPEG, you would set it to 100 and then you can go ahead and give the export a name. Before we export, we can also choose the actual location where the files will be stored. By default, the files will be stored in the project image directory. So for every project you create, it will have its own image directory where you could store material. But if we wanted to store these images directly onto the Mac desktop, we'd simply have to navigate there. In order to do this, next to the actual directory name, you can see there's a little up arrow. If we click on this, this will take us all the way to the root of the system drive. In this case, we can now go ahead and navigate. So for example, if we go to the users, the machine name, and I go to the desktop, I'm now looking at the desktop directory of my system and I've got a folder there called My Exports. If I click on this, this then puts me into that folder. Now instead of me having to navigate to this location every time, one of the things you can do is above the directory settings you've got access to bookmarks. Simply click on the button next to the bookmark option and choose Add. This means if I was in another directory and I need to get to this one quickly, I simply just click the bookmark and then I'm there. Now once I've got my settings set up and I've got my location set up, I simply click export. This will then export the files out onto the desktop into the My Exports folder. Let's have a look at this. So if I switch over to the Mac desktop, you can see there is My Exports folder. And if I open this up, you can see I've got all my JPEGs. If I select one of them and we simply just expand it out, you can see that is the material that we've been working with. Now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to go ahead and just delete the files for the moment. Now let's return back into Smoke and this time we're going to have a look at exporting an image file with an embedded alpha. In order to do this, you need to select the clips in a certain order. The first thing you would do is select your fill and then holding down control, you would select your mat or alpha. You'll note the number next to the clip indicates which one was selected first and which one was selected second. With both of the clips selected, we go back into the export image menu. This time we're going to choose an image format that supports embedded alpha. So you can see I've chosen the target option. Now even though both clips are selected in the library, we can now go ahead and export. Once again, to the same location as before, it's now been exported out the system. So if we switch back to the desktop one more time, you can see that my directory is now full of target files. If I select any one of them and we open it up, you can clearly see that it's got an embedded alpha channel alongside the fill. So that is exactly how we would go ahead and actually export image sequences. If I wanted to export QuickTimes, we can look at it as well. What we're going to do is I'm going to select, for example, the fill and I want to export this out as a QuickTime. It's the same thing again, I go back into my export options and here we choose the QuickTime option. Inside here you can see we have a whole variety of codecs to choose from and please experiment to see which one suits you. In this case, I'm going to choose the regular RGB uncompressed version. Now the first thing you'll notice when we go to exporting QuickTimes is there is no export button. The way this works is this is always exported as a background operation from within Smoke. You can see there's a background operation button and this allows us to add it to a queuing system when the file will then be exported. To see this actual background window, you can either use the swipe bar on the left or on the right of the interface, and when you swipe, you can see how it's brought up on the screen. Now you can choose to either add it to the queue, which means you can add an entry to the queue, you can then go out of the browser, choose another file, add it to the queue, and so forth, 
So you can actually build up a list of files to export, or you can simply just go add to queue and execute. When I do this, it will then export the file out. You can see it's now done. And if we go back out to the desktop, you can see we now have got our QuickTime movie. And if I just bring this full screen, you can see it includes our fill. The same thing applies if you're using QuickTimes with embedded alpha. So for example, if I was to select the fill, holding down control, I select the alpha or mat as well. Inside the exporting options, this time I swipe, so I get back to my exporting tools, and I choose export RGBA, so including the alpha this time, and if I click add to queue and execute, it will then write this in, and you can see how it's now being exported out. In this case, I used the same file name, so it's overwritten the file, but back here on the desktop, you can now see how I've now got my new QuickTime file, and if I play this back, you can clearly see how the green has been replaced with the embedded alpha channel. Another way in which you can export files out of Smoke is doing it through a completely background operation. In order to do this, you simply need access to a web browser on any workstation. The way it's done is you simply launch a web browser, and if you are on the Smoke system, you can simply point it to the local host. However, if you're on a remote system, you simply type in the IP address of the Smoke workstation, and this window will then appear. In this window, you choose the Wiretap Central option, and this will bring up a browser which will show you all the Autodesk Creative Finishing systems on the network, including Smoke Mac as well as Flame Premium. Now, you would simply navigate to your system storage. You would then go to the job where the files are kept, and then go to the clip library until you find the files that are located in the folder. What you can then do is you would then select the files that you wish to export. Now, this is a completely background operation, so you could be doing this on a remote machine without interfering a current session which might be happening on the smoke at the same time. Now, in order for you to go ahead and export this file with it selected, you go to the export menu and you choose export selected. Now, you will get an export window where you can tell the session name what it's going to be. So, for example, if I call this fish, and in this case, we have three tabs. The input tab, which defines the files that we want to export. The output settings. This gives you access to the variety of format that you can output to, and some of them are quite different from what you find within Smoke. And you can then also define their settings. So, for example, if I just make an H.264 file, we can then choose to output it like this. Finally, the third tab is the Submit tab. This allows you to go ahead and tell Smoke to execute the background operation through YTAP Central. When you click Export, the file will be exported in the background on the Smoke workstation without disturbing a foreground operation. Once it's done, we then come back to this window and you now get a few extra options. You can choose to export the file again if you choose, but you've got the option to view what you've just created or create a compressed package. In other words, it will simply take the movie file and compress it into a tar archive, which you can then move around for portability. Now let's see what the file looks like by simply clicking View Content. When we enter this window, you can see it gives us two files. We've got the final, the movie, as well as an information text file. If I click on the final, this will then show us the file that's been exported. So this is the actual H.264 output that's been created. Now if you are using YTAP Central from a remote workstation, you'd simply download it to your local downloads folder. However, if you are on the Smoke workstation where you actually did the export from, what you can do is you can actually access this file directly. Now you can see the file path here is based on a web server path. This allows the system to be able to be accessed from the network from different workstations. But to access this locally, you need to go ahead to a specific location on the Mac system drive. The location that you need to go to is basically this. You go to forward slash library, forward slash web server, forward slash documents, forward slash YTAP central, and forward slash export. If you go into this folder, it then takes us to the folder directly on the system drive. You can see there's a folder called fish, which indicates the session. And inside there, you can see here is the actual QuickTime file that we've got that contains the media. So hopefully this has given you a little bit of insight as to how we can actually export files out of Smoke, whether you're using the direct application, foreground, background processes, 
or doing it remotely using the Wiretap Central service. I hope you guys have enjoyed this blog and I look forward to seeing you again real soon.